what you should put my contacts with. Good morning. Welcome to worship at North Coast United Methodist Church. It's a great day to be together to worship the Lord. Um, I would like to just take a look at some of our upcoming calendar things. Of course, after church today, we have our Zoom social hour. And even during that time period, the pastor and his family take off on vacation. So a lot of the other things that we normally do in the course of the week will not happen this week. Um, there will not be Bible study this week. There will not be the um, Zoom prayer time on Wednesday this week either. Those both will resume next week, though. Uh, next Sunday, exciting movement. We're going to have not a virtual social time. We're going to have a in-person social time. Next Sunday, first Sunday in August, there will be cake. So just keep that in mind for next Sunday after church. Um, the 12th of August, next Friday, is Lunch Bunch monthly meeting. It's going to be at Olive Garden this time. So gather between 11.30 and 12 at the Olive Garden on, on Friday, the 12th of August. I'm sorry, that's that's not actually this week. Next week is the following, the 12th of August. I mean, you can go to Olive Garden this Friday, too, if you want to, but the lunch bunch isn't going to be there until the 12th of August. And on the 24th of August, um, please don't forget, the Bloodmobile will be here again, 1 to 6. Walk-ups are fine. Um, it might be better for your time schedule to get online and schedule an appointment ahead of time. And that's all I have. As we move into our time of prayer, we're definitely going to be praying for all the flooding that's taking place and some loss of lives from floods. Is there any other prayer requests that we have brought with us in our time of worship today? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. We'll pray for all of our leaders that they, they are in places of conversation. They are in close communication with so many different people caring for us, and such things can happen. So not just our president, but for every person that is in uh, situations of being caregivers, but they are not always so safe in doing so. Or any, any other? Yes, Les, please. Can we have your support? Yes. Prayers for the the movement that will become the Methodist Church. Any other prayers? Precious God, we thank you for your presence in all things, the things that we understand, the things that confuse us. Precious God, the things that bring us joy and the things that bring us frustration, you exist in all things. Today, God, I ask you to please be real. Precious God, in the places of clarity, keep things bright. In the places of confusion, remove the clouds and be our God. In your son's precious and loving name, we pray. Amen. <laughs>
As we move into a little shift in our schedule, our speaker today is also going to be assisting with Sunday school. So I needed to move this section before children's time. 
and we're going to have a celebration of ministry at this time. And this celebration is our functioning relationship with Mac Head Start. So I'd like to ask Ms. Raquel Nett to come forward and join us as we celebrate our relationship with Mac. very grateful for our relationship with Mac. Every day I have the beauty of hearing the kids play out in the playground. And when I hear the kids playing out in the playground, I know that there's parents that are able to be at work today and not worry about the child care. I know that there's their friends that are learning things for the first time and getting their educational process started. Raquel, you guys do such great things over there. And my friends are already over here for child, for children's time. Alex, oh good, you're both wearing Star Wars shirts. Andrew, who's on your shirt? Man, Man, Mandalorian and Baby Yoda. Who? And you got a drone on your shirt. And who's on the top shirt? Grogu, is that his name? Grogu. So you are both wearing Star Wars shirts. Now I'm not going to tell you to say how old you are, but I will share with you. When I was your age, you know what some of my favorite stories were? Star Wars stories. So even at my age, I liked Star Wars stuff when I was your age. Our scripture today is about how that we learn stories and it becomes our responsibility to keep telling those stories over and over again. Could you imagine how much fun you would miss out on, Alex, if I was if they stopped telling Star Wars stories when I was your age, you wouldn't know anything about Yoda or Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader, but I bet you have a whole lot of fun when you hear those stories. Huh? The more ways that we find to keep telling stories means that we can pass the joy on to someone else. And I'm going to bet one day in a really, really long time from now, Neil, a really long time from now, <laughs> When that you guys have kids, I bet you they'll get to hear those stories too. And they will have all the joy that you've had from when you've heard them. So let's pray together about ways that we can keep telling stories and passing joy to others. Dear God, thank you for making me happy with Star Wars and Batman and all sorts of stories. And thank you for helping me share those stories with others. Amen. Enjoy Sunday school. Thank you. 
Christ our life or of uh, help us to set our minds on heavenly things during this time of worship. Clothe uh, us with your love and your compassion that when we leave this place and continue in our earthly lives, we might bring a bit of heaven to a world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. of assurance. As we put on our new nature in Christ, we are clothed in mercy and love. In this grace, we are renewed, redeemed, and reclaimed. The scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 12, verses 13 to 20. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me judge or arbiter between you? And he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bitter ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take my easy, eat, drink, and be merry. God said to him, you fool, this very night the life will be demanded from then who will get you what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich toward God. Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, thank you for the people that are there. Thank you for the blessings that exist in our lives. And the more blessings that we become aware of, we move into these challenges on how to share them efficiently, how to share them caringly, and how to be caregivers of the blessings. God, that's not always an easy task. It's not always a balanced task. We thank you for being with us as we are the hands and feet, God. You are the mind and the spirit that comes. Be with us today as we look at this scripture, Lord, in your son's precious and loving name. I want us to thank you for a minute. This scripture has uh, moved me this week and has moved me in a different level this morning. And we have three dear friends of mine in the parking lot looking around. There is a significance of our blessings. We're called to be caregivers and we're called to share those blessings with others as we also care for the flock as we also try to make the unknown feel welcome, and as we also have to deal in a very specific reality with the unknown, because we also have to be the caregivers of others and the protectors of others. It is an imbalanced action to be a balanced 
figure of peace. I think about that this morning. I, I'm always transparent and honest. I, I stepped out to greet a friend who was not very welcoming of my greeting. And now, so I feel a little bit personally. But it's hard. Because here's a challenge when I think about this. I, I've dealt with this on other levels this week. We have this beautiful space that we need to be welcoming. We look at the reality of what it means to be images of grace for other people. We want so direly to boldly just be open and caregivers and give as much grace as possible and care for everyone. Unfortunately, we live in very messy, messy. Gentlemen, I want to thank you both. Thank you. We live in a very messy situation. We have to deal with the reality. We can't just always open our doors. We need to be aware if it's the big bad wolf coming in to find the pigs. And we need to be caregivers willing to go out and have the conversations to make sure that people know that this is a place that wants to be welcome and wants to be cared and distracted if you can. Want to be distracted to be honest. Especially when we look at this scripture, because we look at this scripture and there's a conversation going on between individuals talking to Jesus Christ and what the individuals want Jesus Christ to say is, this is what's yours. This is what belongs to you. This is the honesty of what you should have, and this is the honesty of what you should be given. And look at that in the eyes of what our faith is. In the eyes of what our faith is, is there's things that we want from our faith. We want to feel loved and welcome. We want to feel accepted and heard for who we are. It's not always the easiest thing to do. Because as we think of a God that dispenses endless grace, we also serve a God who stepped out to protect the weak and the marginalized. He stepped out to be a voice of safety for individuals who are trying to find their place at a table. And Christ was the one. I'm going to say a term that's not said in a lot of Methodist churches, but man, I've heard it every Sunday in the Southern Baptist Church. Serve of God also stood face to face with the devil and told him to be thought of. When we care about what it means to share grace, it is scary, it's confusing, it's cumbersome. Trust people that have the knowledge on how to do that and to do it in such a way that we are individuals willing to have the conversations of grace and be the individuals that protect the flock. That is a caring reality. When Christ is looking at this scripture, as Christ is having this conversation at this moment, Christ is having both a conversation of saying it doesn't matter what's yours because what's yours will disappear. And there is a conversation about what it really means to be a caregiver of what we've been. It's hard. They didn't even give this class in seminary on how to do the hard all works in to how that we address the situation when we move into it. This conversation between Christ and the individual saying, tell me what's mine. Divvy up the inheritance. Tell me what's mine. There is an ownership that exists in that conversation. There is a need that exists in that conversation. 
as we deal with the me, there is possession, there's grabbing on the things, and it's holding it and holding it, and I'm the only person that gets to cherish them. And that's what Christ combats in this. The initial start of the conversation is tell me what I have. I've seen so many times from many of you, it's a conversation I just tried to have. The first words out of many of your mouths, and I think it was the first word out of mine, is how can I help you? I go to Brother Benjamin's, and I hear everyone say, how can I help you? I go, and I've seen Head Start, the Republican Start, those conversations are all about how can I help you? I've gone and I've we've heard our, from our friends with the backpacks and I've been over their, their facility. And the first words that come out of their mouth is how can I help you? Now there's a reality in that. There are ways that we have been blessed and provided grace and guidance to be the ones that ask those questions and there exists within that some limitations. We exist even within our Wesleyan understanding of grace. When we look at what justifying grace explains, there is an expectation that exists in justifying grace. We have a God that's willing to give and give and give and give and give, but even in the words of John Wesley, there has to be an intentional response to that giving, and an intentional understanding with that giving, and an intentional willingness to interact with that giving, for it to be full and whole. When we look at the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, there is a response that exists in that understanding of grace. As the Apostle Paul says, and I will not mess it up this time, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts, we'll be saved. The glory is with our mouth we confess the righteousness in our hearts, we believe in salvation. There is a response that is intentional with that. I become very sad when I walk out to say hi to someone and am quickly responding to them. I become very sad. Because I feel in my heart that there had to be something more, there must be something more. And I begin to think about this. But I also know from everything that I was raised with as a conservative Southern Baptist, all the way up to a liberal Wesleyan, that there is still a willingness and response that has to happen. And yet, sometimes that comes from the extra efforts. It comes from dear friends who become the seekers to expand that conversation. Again, I want to thank both of you for doing that. It comes from the willingness when that we see a person again to not allow one negative response to deny another attempt to share what grace is. I was think about many times that I heard the message of grace as a teenager, and I said, not today. But as a 15-year-old walked down the aisle with Dr. Jim Martin, I said, today. It's a willingness to keep the conversation going, even in the times that someone says, not today. It's a willingness to be aware of the situation. Amazing how that God can take reality and reshape the way that we look at the scripture. If you have ever wondered if I've ever just stood up here and talked and shared something that was not prepared, today would be that example. Paul's reality exceeds what I wrote down. We have a gift, we attempt to share it. Time's up in here, not today. Sorry. Thanks, everybody.
place they should stay. As long as we're willing to have that conversation again, there's going to be an open door. So the opportunity may not exist for us to open the doors. There's so many times that I've used narrative with my dear friends who have shared, I've never touched anybody for Christ. I've never had those conversations with Christ, for Christ, with a person. It's just fine. Yeah, yeah. Because within the garden, David, correct me, sometimes one person plants the seed, and sometimes somebody pours the water, sometimes someone else lays the fertilizer, and it's not just one story that helps that seed grow as many. I pray that be the reality of times that I feel like I effort of trying to get others to continue the conversation and to come in the hands and feet of others to continue the conversation so that people can find peace. Sometimes I'm pretty good about spreading the word. But thank goodness that there's other people that plant to see and other people that Trying to get the sermon I gave today, God made it. Precious God, I'll be with us today as we continue to try to be the ones to step away from what's ours, to try to provide what we are called to provide, and to know that sometimes the answer will be no. To know that sometimes the answer will be no. On the night that Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, he dealt with the reality. He dealt with the reality that that evening someone would go to the Roman guards and say no. He would turn Christ over to be crucified. Christ, on the night in which that he gave himself up for us, dealt with the reality. On that evening, he would deal with someone who would say no. An individual that would go out and be questioned of his relationship with Jesus Christ, and on that evening denied him three times. But for both of them, Christ still dispensed grace and shared it. Christ, through the image of the Holy Spirit, continued to reach out, continued to care, continued to share. And thankfully for one of those men, they became a rock of the church. Today, as we celebrate these gifts that Jesus Christ provided for us, we celebrate the reality that we serve a God who continues to reach out to us. And even though at times, even within our own hearts and souls, our response is not today, that God continues to reach and try and care. So today, as we receive the cup that is the image of Christ's blood for us, as receive the bread that is the body of Christ for us. We share today that your God encompass these things with your Holy Spirit. Make them be as your cup of salvation and as your body which is broken for us in the name of grace, love, and care. Use them to remind us of your active daily presence that even in the moments of disappointment that we may have said not today that you continue to reach out for another opportunity. Precious God, be with us today. Make us as your hands and feet for others. Surround us with your Holy Spirit and comfort our lives as we celebrate your authentic gifts. Amen. Please receive the gifts of Jesus Christ.
care of David. Give him all life. You have given us every good gift and treasures in our desert. Thank you for these gifts. Thank you for the gifts we now return to you. And these gifts and the lives that we need to feel your glory. Display your love and focus our attention on the things that matter most. starts as soon as I say amen, and when you see that figure in the back wall, <laughs> this is it. Thank you, folks. Go forth as a reflection of Christ. Go forth as people who know what matters. Go forth to love and treasure others. We go to be Christ for the world. Amen. We'd like to have the opportunity to get to know you. Please email us at ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And if you've been enjoying our services online, please email us. Please say hello. Again, that's ncumcinfo at gmail.com. And also, if you'd like to give to our church, please go to northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button.
Again, that's northcoastumc.org and click on the Give button. Thank you for joining us.